In a recent find, archaeologists have uncovered evidence of early humans with small brains supporting an elderly human with no teeth. This goes against the idea that these social behaviours required large brains and would only happen in more evolved humans. Let's dive in and find out more. One of the most important sites in the story of human evolution can be found close to the Georgian capital Tbilisi. Near the twisting river with forests, fields, black basalt hills stretching for miles, there is a site which is barely 10 acres in size. It is dominated by medieval ruins and a small working monastery where the monks tend hives of honeybees. Despite these buildings, the surroundings have not changed much in the last two million years. If we wind back the clock, then this area was a biodiverse hotspot and was home to a unique assemblage of carnivals, including several big cat species from Africa, Europe and Asia. Previously, we've looked at the story of new finds from Crete, which showed that the idea of humans evolving and then migrating out of Africa was wrong. These finds in Crete seem to indicate that the humans were already present in Europe, right at the beginning of their evolutionary branch. In Georgia, the finds also seem to support this idea, with more evidence of homonyms outside of Africa. Since the late 80s, this site has been a treasure trove of discoveries. In a new piece of research, a team led by the University of Zurich have analysed the likely brain organisation in these early homonyms, and it upends a long-held belief that the quintessential human behaviours require big, complex brains. The homonyms they uncovered had surprisingly primitive ape-like brains, and yet they were able to produce a variety of tools and exploit animal resources. More remarkable is that it appears as if their society also took great care of their elderly. They discovered the skull which belonged to an elderly toothless individual who would have been unable to eat on their own. It is thought that they did not have access to fire so could not cook their food so it would have been impossible for a toothless individual to survive. On top of this, they lived amongst what appeared to be an extraordinary concentration of big carnivores. This is really astounding. This provides a completely new perspective on what these human behaviours mean in terms of brain evolution. The fossils in this region stand apart for a number of reasons. The site itself is in a transitional region between Georgia's wet, humid west and its arid east. It sits along a migratory path for animals that summer at higher elevations in the mountains to the north. The area itself sits at the confluence of two rivers with narrow deep valleys which naturally concentrate the animals. More than 10,000 animal bones have been found from the site and these include at least 50 different mammal species. So unique is the combination of areas that these animals include a very fascinating mix that seems to spread three continents. These include rhinoceros, elephant, deer, ostrich and horses. The carnivores include coyote-sized wolves, two species of saber-toothed cats, lynx, bears, giant hyenas and lion-sized jaguars, and a giant cheetah. The plants and trees also paint a very strange picture. It consists of a patchwork of forests and grasslands. This means that there is such diversity that there is something there for everybody. This paradise seems to have been a very short-lived event. All the fossil remains they have discovered have come from a single layer in the rock, which they date to 1.77 million years ago. It is sandwiched between two layers of volcanic ash. This region's diversity may therefore have only existed for less than 10,000 years and possibly as short as only a few hundred years. It was then buried quickly but gently by ashfall from regional volcanoes that preserved the strange history. Now, there are a number of elements that raise some rather interesting questions from this article. Firstly, the fact that no other fossils are found in the region pre or post dating this event is rather curious. It is thought that the region dried out after the event, meaning an end to this paradise, less animals and conditions which do not favour the formation of fossils. But what about before this time? If this area only existed for such a short period of time, why was it so inhospitable prior to the first volcanic event? It once more highlights the problems we face in reconstructing our history. There is no single place that contains all the strata in order. 
I have previously discussed the problems with dating the strata and making assumptions about how a particular stratum fits in with what they assume is a global record. There are also many problems with the dating methods that they use, and I have also previously touched upon these. What this site does present is a very interesting sandwich between two catastrophic events that seem to have created a perfect paradise for only a very short period of time. The number and variety of animals found here is remarkable and could indeed be explained by the fact that at the time it bordered both wet and dry areas. It does however also remind me of the Earth in Upheaval series and the variety of animals again from such differing climates that seem to be found together across the caves of Europe, Alaska and Siberia. The next question is how and why these early humans could support an elderly person with no teeth. The current assumption is that they only ate raw meat and were predominantly scavengers rather than hunters. Some of the animal bones show signs that they were butchered using stone tools. Some of the human bones also show signs of gnaw marks, indicating that they were also sometimes on the menu for the animals that lived there. Eating without teeth is really not an easy task. Add into this mix the fact that they think they only ate raw meat, and you have to ask how exactly these early humans supported this individual. What was their motivation to do this? It is assumed that these sorts of quintessential behaviours would only happen with larger brains. This once more raises the question about our understanding of what exactly intelligence is and how it relates to the brain and its size. What triggered the event prior and just after this period? From Bruce Laybourne's work, there is a clear connection from the Earth's electrical circuit and volcanic activity. The question here would be why is there a long enough period for the paradise to spring up, only to be destroyed a few hundred to a few thousand years later, and then to never return again in the same way afterwards? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.